every magic every act, magic act consists of three parts. Okay. It's the pledge. Well, you take, you know, you, you show the yeah. audience you've got something normal, and then it's like, then you've got the turn. You take something that's ordinary, and you present it as extraordinary. Yeah. And then it's just, oh. The length for double is the slavery in the Yeah, the length for double. How did you not know? <laughs> Did you not know? <laughs> James is going to do the whole film now. I can now. do the whole thing. Oh, I love it, it. it. If I can see you kissing her leg on the side, <laughs> so can the guys at the ends of rows three and four. <laughs> <laughs>
a younger old viewer by for me at this point um, that I got completely sucked in. I have gone back and as an, I made a conscious effort when I got to like adulthood mm. to be like I know The Godfather, but, but have I have seen it, and I've seen it probably three times now as an adult, and each time I do find it incredibly rewarding. I think it's because it's got that kind of very poetic. Um, artistic take on what is essentially quite a violent and pulpy story. Yeah. You've got gangsters, you've got mobsters, you've got people getting strangled and killed and shot up and beaten up, but it's done in a very artful, tasteful, elegiac, in a way, lyrical depiction. I mean, there's a scene uh, where between Brando and Pacino in the garden, and yes, Brando doing the oft parody, the, you know, he's talking with the cotton buds. Yeah. The side of his mouth, he's so uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. his jaw is like so and the makeup on his face. But he says, um, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not what they said. Can I say that's one of the biggest misquotes yeah. in the film? It's not you, you, the day of my daughter's wedding. He says, you come to me on the day my daughter is to be married. Oh, right, the day right, my daughter is to be married, he's right? But there's a scene with Pacino when he's in the garden and he says, you know, I never wanted this for you. I always wanted Senator Carleone. Uh, Congressman Colleone, because he wanted Sonny to, to hold yeah. the strings, right? And they and as they're playing it, they've got the soft score in the background, mm. and that kind of just picks up, but it's so beautiful. And you got mm. like the kind of autumn leaves. A lot of shots in the film draw on an Italian film uh, called The Con Conformist or La Conformista, oh, right? Um, which has a lot of really kind of informed filmmakers at that time, which is again is about sort of a. Um, organized crime and there's a shot very famous shot in that of the autumn leaves blowing across a lawn and the camera follows the leaves and it's been right. referenced in the godfather or I, maybe godfather part two that, yeah. yeah and it's been used in the sopranos and things so that kind of approach is really uh, there in the godfather one of the things i've since learned about that film what i think is really special about it is that the way in which the godfather was shot was and the way in which it used lighting and shadows was mm -hmm. one of their groundbreaking and most influential aspects of it mm -hmm. so you know how pretty much everyone in that movie is half cast in light and shadow mm -hmm. and don Corleone's eyes are always black and you yeah. never actually see him because he's this mysterious man of mystery that's never uncovered yeah. that film was shot so underexposed and so dark purposefully for its artistic mm -hmm. direction people hadn't seen shadows yes. and light on faces to it in that fits in that way since like Nosferatu. Yes. And apparently when the studio was seeing the early shots and the rushes from this film, they were getting really panicked because they thought it had all just been messed up. Huh. And you, like even in the first scene, the entire room is dark and underexposed. Oh, yeah. and you've got this guy lit and then you I believe come, in America. It, it comes says, yeah. over the shoulder of Don Corleone who's in shadow. Yes. And it, and it you, and then Al Pacino's face consistently throughout the film, he starts off being really well lit. Yes. And you can tell that his it's it's this whole cliche of cinematography that if someone's in light they are noble and at one with themselves and yeah. if someone is half cast they are slowly like conflicted conflicted and that comes from the godfather yeah. because as the film goes over al pacino's face starts to be half cast in the light half cast in shadow mm. and i'm like wow like that that was one of the first that was one of the films that popularized that yeah. cinematography trait and is it funny we we had a conversation about the batman which you're talking yes. about is it draws heavily on mood and shadow and darkness so and you can see it there in the Godfather. Even. That first scene is, is is actually really important because uh, what it's not only that it's really dark and shadowy inside, it's that outside it's like a bright sunny day for the wedding. You yes. have this huge celebration, this color, huge, color, vibrant music, and then it cuts and inside you have this very still, dark mm. business meeting between um, Vito and... And that starts reflected in the poster, which is the silhouette of Don Corleone yeah, in and the, the darkness. The black just bla his, the like black black. His tuxedo just blends in with the... Jet and you have the, 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 the red rose like sticking out like a, like a blood shot, yes. a, a gunshot of blood, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is it is incredibly distinctive. What I think is also interesting about The Godfather is that it's three hours long. Yeah. And again, when we talk about the Batman, you were talking about uh, the, the pacing of that and how it uses its time. I've heard people say that they find The Godfather slow. And I find that really... Uh, I disagree because I can tell that The Godfather is based on a book. Because when you watch that three hours, they cram so much story in you could there. You could add the descriptions in the pauses. Yes. And it would, you could almost read it in real time. And I was like, oh, then th there's lots of story. There's lots and lots of story there. And I think also like when we talked about The Exorcist, I think the reason that film works, the way The Godfather works, is you, it's just built on great foundations of a great yeah. story. I mean, the film covers 10 years, 1945 to 1955, and, and doesn't earmark, doesn't flag those year changes up too obviously. No. But by the end, I was thinking, oh God, like 10 years have passed here. It's all, yeah. lots, lot, lots changing. Um, I mean, not a great film for the representation of women. Um, no. You have uh, probably about three female characters. Uh, no, you've got four. Um, Something very bad happens to one of them. Yeah. 
The other one just gets beaten up, which They're is really like sad. Tools for a plot. Yep. Aren't they? Yeah, the mother, I don't cool. think, has any single lines of dialogue, and um, Diane Keaton is in it for like three scenes, and and literally has the door shut in her face um, <laughs> in one of the most iconic shots. Yeah, um, that's a shame. Pacino, great, yeah. um, and that scene in the uh, in the in the restaurant. Uh, which is like the middle point of the film. It's a yeah. very de decisive moment for Michael. So the whole thing with Michael Corleone is that he didn't want to have any part of it. He was he was trying to break away from the family. He'd got he'd gone to war to be to be a soldier. And he'd come yeah. back a war hero, very noble character. He didn't want to get mucky and involved in this, but because of the things that happened in the plot, he he, he has to. And uh, he's in this you know restaurant, and the sound of the tram goes by, and it's tense, and there's a strong pull on his face. And it's just beautifully shot. Mm. And, and, and again, very poetically done for a moment of extreme violence that happens. Mm. I, I think it's quite funny that um, I hear stories about what Marlon Brando was like to work with on that film. And obviously it's gone down in history as one of the great performances. Mm. And he's obviously, he is a fantastic actor. But apparently he, had to, he was forcing people to hold up cue cards with his lines on them behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Brando, I think I haven't heard that about this film. Yeah. Brando does have a very interesting arc. If you ever want to know more about him, watch a documentary called "Listen to Me, Marlon," okay. which was made entirely with Marlon Brando's voice. Oh wow! So, okay. so what I mean is that Marlon Brando, you know, died in like two thousand and four. Yeah, but he recorded a lot of audio diaries, voice notes to himself on oh, tapes, wow. and they have this whole collection. And in this documentary, they take that collection of voice notes and every single piece of archive footage he ever talked about himself in interviews and things like that. Yeah, and they tell the story of his life. And what was interesting is when The Godfather came along, Brando was a waning star. The studio didn't want him. Yeah. They wanted other people to play him. And yeah, he was his big, his big moment was in what? Like the on the waterfront days. Yeah, like, yeah, could great. Have been some, like, yeah, he could have been a contender. Yeah. He could have been a contender. He still yeah. has that he nasal jaw. Yeah. It's, it's in the jaw, it's in the slight oh. blunt nose yeah. and the jaw at the back. But if you do it too much. <laughs> and he was like, Really handsome. When he's, uh, oh, oh God. Well, absolute iconic, iconic screen yeah. presence. You know, he's so yeah on the waterfront, guys and dolls, streetcar named Desire, mm. the wild one, and then yeah, by the sixties he kind of washed up, and he would kind of lost love, uh, lost his love for cinema as well mm. in the film industry. Um, but he was quite a troubled figure as well. And anyway, he came back with The Godfather and had a, it had sort of a resurgence for his career. Yeah. Famously, won best best actor, de declined his Oscar. Yeah, in, in, in a protest, he um, and then he had. A very interesting. By the later stages of his career, by like the nineties, he was literally having an earpiece in, so people could say his lines into him because he did not care. He just decided that I'm just going to make money out of this, and I don't, yeah. I don't care. And it's like this parody now, like people talk about latter day Brando, where he puts on a lot of weight, yeah, and just like, just, he just was, phones, phones it in. Jorel in, uh, yeah, in Superman. In, in Superman. Yeah. But, but, but the whole point is that he was. It looks lazy, but this documentary, Listen to Me, Marlon, explains how that actually comes from almost like a protest. He, he found the whole Hollywood circus really vain and dis dispiriting. Yeah. And he kind of hated it. But back to what we're talking about with um, reading his cue cards to him on set. Yeah, um, I, I, di I didn't know that, but it works. Whatever the case, it, yeah. it, it, it worked. It delivers a great performance. Did you also know it was one of the, it was the highest grossing film for it. So we talked about that you yes, know, last week. I remember was, so 1972 was the highest grossing film. For a long time, it was the highest grossing film of all mm. time. I don't know what overtook it. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Jaws probably a couple of I years think, later. I think it was Jaws, yeah. Right. Um, and that's an interesting moment as well. I mean, like Pauline Kael wrote this review where it was like a mixture of com commerce and art coming together. Also like a very dark, long, R-rated, yeah. adult-only yes. film. Uh, like, you know, making loads of money like that. Yeah, to, being that's, it's, it's always the, There's always this assumption that really uh, adult films never I say adult films films that are R rated don't make money but they always they always do like like even recently like Deadpool took so many people by surprise because yeah. it was 18 rated action comedy that made so much money yeah. there's always this idea that if you knock out kids from your cinema goes you're never gonna find any success but actually it turns out people really like I know. violence yeah. and, and sex and things like that it's almost like the industry is forcing is forcing this infantilization of, yeah. the, of, of an audience but it's like well actually if you look at some of the biggest breakout hits they they're, they're adult films. Yeah. Godfather, Exorcist. I mean, Jaws, I suppose, is slightly more broad because it's more generic. But yeah. anyway, if you haven't seen The Godfather, then mm. what the hell are you doing listening still, to this podcast for? Go it's in. It's still good to and then check out. You've got The Godfather Part Two, which is also very good. I, I, the only thing with The Godfather Part Two. I've not two, seen Part Two. I've not seen Part Two. Well, in two years' time, when we do the 50th anniversary, <laughs> yeah. for the, 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 I really need to see part two. So, just yeah, last thing. So, Godfather Part Two is is very good as well. Mm. Really builds on uh, Pacino's character. Fantastic. 
I don't think it needs the... It, the whole thing in Godfather Part Two is that it also shows the origin story of Vita Corleone and Robert right. De Niro plays... Yes. It, so he, he cuts back to like 1920s, 1910s. Okay. Um, uh, no, even earlier, like early 1900s New York, where he's arrived as an right, immigrant okay. from Sicily, yeah. right? And it's you have characters from The Godfather turning up as young versions of themselves. That weaves in and out of Michael's story in Godfather Part Two. Make, makes Godfather Part Two three three and a half hours long. I honestly believe they did not have to have the Robert De Niro bit in. You think? I don't think it needs to be in there. Some people find that part controversial. Say, Could have been its own film. Part Two's the best film. I, I disagree because I will always part love one. to have Brando in the first one. And I, yeah. I think there's more interesting... Um, nuances in the first one. Although the second one is slightly more complex character-wise because Michael is really wrestling with, with what he becomes. But I don't think the the flashback to young Vito needs to be in Godfather Part 2. It could have been its own film. Would have cut the runtime down as well, which really helps. Godfather Part 2 as well is a real arc of like, this is a big story. Epic. There's an intermission in it, I'm pretty sure. Oh, is that? I love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like uh, The Hateful Eight. <laughs> <laughs> slightly different territory. They're very different. Um, what is also great... In between making The Godfather, one of the most famous films of all time, Godfather Part Two, also one of the most famous films of all time, and high, highest regarded, Coppola made a film in between that called The Conversation with Gene Hackman. Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't. You've got to go see it, it, which is also a fantastic film. This guy knocked out three great films on the trot. The Conversation is about Gene, it's got Gene Hackman in it. It's about a sound uh, investigator. He's mm. an audio, he records people, and he stumbles upon what he thinks is a slight... Um, mystery you know you've just got to see it, it the world really the role of sound design it's just fantastic maybe I should do conversation then part two sorry <laughs> maybe i should do that film and then part yeah two. you should do a couple of bill yeah, right of bill, yeah. and then um and then obviously like a couple enough to make, make apocalypse now so go and see it go mm. see godfather part two see the conversation see part two. and in, in regards to godfather part three which has been much maligned. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a very, very long time. I think a lot of people are very hard on that film. Coppola has since changed the title of that film to what he already wanted it to be. He said The Godfather was originally just two films mm. and he wanted to have an epilogue and it was called The Death of Michael Corleone, right? Right. But the studio said, no, we're calling it Godfather I Part 3. Right? That, yeah. But understandably, when you hold a third film up to two great films, it didn't quite have the same uh, response. But now, if you look at that film online, it's called, I think it's called The Godfather Coda the death of Michael Corleone or something like right, that. Right, okay. So it's very clear that this is not trying to be part three so of part the story. Part three is, is not an accurate way to describe you know what? that. And also, if you get to the end of part two, although it concludes the story, I actually, when I finished part two, was like, they, they could have made a part three two years after this to finish this whole story. Wow. But, um, instead of waiting. Uh, anyway, Godfather, <laughs> Godfather, 50 years old, go check it out or go rewatch it. So James, mm. we just had a conversation about The Godfather did. and about how, you know, one of the most famous films of all time. Mm -hmm. A film that includes so many famous quotes. Can you give me some Godfather quotes off the top of your head? Because oh. everyone knows them. You come, you come to my daughter the day of our wedding. You come to the day... No, you, <laughs> you, no, come, to you come to, you come like to me on the day that my daughter is to be daughter. married. I like it. And I'm going to make I it. I like it when he's like, and you'll never invite me over for dinner. Yeah, no, no, that, yeah, when he says, yeah, I've never once been to your family. He does the... Um, I like um, that. It's like, you ask me something, like, when was the last time you had me over for dinner? Also, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Can't refuse. He's gonna make yeah. it, I know, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm butchering it. butchering it. Anyway, I digress. I bring this up because whilst I'm talking about that, a film that's spawned so many famous quotes, mm. I thought, I'm going to test you. Oh, okay. I'm going to fire some very famous film quotes at you. Let's go. And I want you to tell me what film they came from. Very simple. <sighs> okay. However, I'm only going to fire you film quotes from the 21st century. Okay. Because I think it's too easy. If you could do films, films that Fine. are, you know, like The Godfather, they're so famous. You know, if I said to you, oh, are you, are you, are you talking to me? You'd be like Taxi Driver. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do... Okay, all right. Get my brain on. I'm going to run through some. Famous quotes. And we're going to do it. Uh, I'm going to... Can I start with a hard one? Okay, start hard. Jessica, only child, Illinois, Chicago. Jessica, only child, Illinois, Chicago. I don't know this one. Jessica, only child, Illinois, Illinois Chicago. Chicago. Not Chicago films. No, I don't know that. Go on. Parasite. It's ah. what the sister says, reminds herself of the lie she has That's to tell. That's hard because it's not English. Yeah, language. you know, it's okay. Yeah. No, but she Wait, says it. She says it again? in English. She says it in English because she said it's meant to be that she like, knows English because they're going to teach English, ah, right? Okay, good one. So it, All right, and, like and just as they, because he's brought her along now, he it, just as they get to the front door, he says, "Remember." And he, she says, yes, Jessica, only child, yes. Illinois, Chicago. Yes, okay, I do remember that. I wouldn't have got that, but that's a good one. I'll give you an easy one. Yeah, okay. I drink your milkshake. 
I drink. I don't know this one. Are you joking? You've not seen this film. You, you must have not seen this film because you, you, if you haven't, uh, uh, everyone who's seen this film will know this quote. I recognize it. I drink your milkshake. I don't know. There will be blood. Oh, yeah. You not seen that? I've seen There Will Be Blood, but I don't. That is the scene. The scene of There Will Be Blood. I, d I don't know. I drink, I drink it up. Eli, you boy, you snivelling ass. Do you me, remember that? To me, the quote is, I've abandoned my child. Uh, oh, <laughs> I've yeah, abandoned yeah, yeah. my that, boy. That's, that's the scene that comes to me. That is actually which, which, Yeah, like now I remember that's not that's not what I think of that film. That's like, and then the other quote is, I'm an oil man. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm an oil like, man. Like the event, his speech where the camera like slowly talks into him and he's like pitching to the room. Oh. It's like, you my son. Uh, oh, well, what's that? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm going slightly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, really, I don't think it's like drink my motion. Wait, is that, who says that? Daniel Plainview, Daniel yeah. Day-Lewis to Paul, Paul Dano. Is it in the last scene? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. What I love about yeah, that movie, yeah, it just builds to that. It's a great film. All so and good. then that last scene is just, ah. Oh. Okay, next up. Florals for spring, groundbreaking. I don't know. Oh, come on, it's the funniest line in the film. <laughs> Say it again. Florals for spring, groundbreaking. I don't know. <laughs> the Devil Wears Prada. Where is that in Devil Wears Prada? That is the funniest. Like they're I know so many quotes from well, Devil Wears Prada. What to do? It's a it's a big ball meeting, and the woman's like, "Oh, we were thinking of doing a big floral collection for spring." She's like, "Florals for spring, groundbreaking." <laughs> I don't know that. I love that film though. That's fantastic. Okay, she doesn't even go here. Mean Girls, oh, iconic, right. quoted forever. Like I I I've been in assemblies. Before, yeah. when we, <laughs> someone has just said something awkward. Like, James, why are you still going to school assemblies? <laughs> Back in the day, it would be a silence. Someone would go, she doesn't even go here. And it would always get such a huge laughter. Migos, I really want to rewatch watch Migos. I've seen it for years. Next up. Yeah. A million dollars isn't cool. You know what's cool? A billion dollars. Uh, that is from the social network. And it's uh, the guy who's, what's his name again? The Sean guy, Parker. Sean Parker. Justin Timberlake. I think it's film. Justin Timberlake's best performance. Yes. As an actor. Because yeah. um, he's really good in that film. I love that film. And that's one of like the famous quotes from the trailer as well, which is a great trailer. Mm. Um, no, your, your best friend is suing your you. Your best friend is suing you for $600 million. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it that's was... part of my intention. You have the minimum amount. When we saw Justin Timberlake in that film, I think everyone thought, oh, a whole mm. new movie career for Justin Timberlake. And he kind of did it. Was his first one? No, he'd no. been in some other stuff, I yeah, think. Okay. But, and he was like... In, after this, he would do Friends with Benefits. This is our time. Yeah, <laughs> this is now. Yeah, he was in uh, yeah Friends with Benefits and like uh, what's that other in time, in time with Amanda Seyfried. Interesting concept, but I can't say it was made for a good movie. No, I mean I never saw it because it looked. Hokey. I have seen it. It's it's a real like um, divergent, like verging on that sort of teen yeah. dystopia type film. But it's not. Teen. Do you know what it is? It's it's watered down Matrix like. 12 years yeah. after The Matrix came out. Yeah. It's even got the green it, color it, scheme. What it does, that, that film has a concept and it ha it's engaging for the time in which it explains its concept. In the same way, like, if you're watching a movie, film, you're like, right? you're like, ooh, this is a world and you're in interested yeah. and then it doesn't have anything yeah. interesting to go with it. Yeah. But I thought Justin Timberlake was on the verge of like, you know, becoming a big movie star. And then yeah. he kind of just stepped back and then he did more music and it's like, okay, Justin, whatever you want. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, he's really he's good there. really good in that film. And very well cast yeah. in the film, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark! You better lawyer up, <laughs> asshole, because I'm coming for everything. Yeah. And then you just yeah. hear the score, like... Wah, 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 yeah. Wah, wah, wah. All right. It's so, like, overly dramatic. By the way, I really want a social network sequel set, like, 10 years later, 15 years later. Oh, with, like, fake news. Become, and, oh. Yeah, I don't want it to be the same film. I want it to be a completely different film, but I want that approach to telling what... Like, just, like, the building to what that became, just... just keep going and, and tell the story yeah. of what happened next at Facebook because there's so... With Jesse Eisenberg. The, the, yeah. the, the, the context for what Facebook is now is so different and I'd love to see yeah, another to was... film dramatized. Yeah. Doesn't even, I mean, like, you can do Jesse Eisenberg. I don't mind, but like, give yeah. me more of that you know what it is? The social network now is almost a, is almost a period piece. Yes. It's just so innocent. We that this do nothing. The beginning of yeah. Facebook. Like, like, <laughs> how, is, how, does, how does this relate to the metaverse? There's so much more that needs to be said about that and I'd, lo I'd love to get that approach, that level of quality on the new film. Okay. Boy, that escalated quickly. Oh my God. Um, oh, there's so many things. Oh my god, it's too, too many things coming to my head. Boy, that escalated quickly. It's just one film. I know, but I feel like I've, I've. Oh god, what is it? Go on, tell me. If I do it in this voice, you'll get it. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. <laughs> Anchorman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Anchorman. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, 2004. I should Thank be saying you, yeah. the years. Okay, you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Oh. um... 
It's uh, the, the Room. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Greatest film of the 20th century. The 20th century. Um, I liked um, The Disaster Artist as well. I enjoyed that mm. film. Here's one for you. I don't think you'll get this, but I, I, I wonder if you've seen the film. Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. They just don't. Oh, I recognize it, but I don't know. What is it? Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. They just don't. What is it? Legally Blonde. Uh, okay. Have you seen Legally Blonde? Yeah, yeah, I've seen Legally Blonde. Yeah, I watched like that recently. Blonde. I really liked it. I've not it. seen it for a long Funny. time. Do you know the mum? One of the mums from Euphoria is in that. You know the uh, Cassie's mum who's always drinking a glass yes, of wine? Yeah. She's one of her friends in it. Oh, great. You know what I learned recently is that the the, the one who's Cassie's sister is Judd Apatow's yeah, daughter. Yeah, Maud Apatow. Yeah, 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 yeah she's in really loads. that, yeah. Cassie? She's great as... Maud Apatow, she has a kind of lilt. Yeah. yeah. What? what? You're taking away Wi-Fi? Yeah. <laughs> she's re she's really that? good in like the Knocked Up and This Is 40 films. Yes. She's playing the quite, same character. Playing the same character, yes. yeah. Because she's a Leslie Mann's child. Yes. She, yeah. <laughs> she's a Leslie Mann child. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You sit on a throne of lies. Oh, God. You sit on a throne of lies. Oh, come on. It's quite a big one. Is it? It's not Step Brothers, is it? No. I think we're talking about it at the wrong time of year. You sit on a throne of lies. Grinch? Close. Ace Ventura. Calder. Close to the Grinch. I don't know. Go you on. sit on a throne of lies. Oh, it sounds so familiar. Elf. Oh, Elf. Yeah. Oh, God, I didn't know Elf like that well. Are you not entertained? Uh, Gladiator. Well done. Yeah, most iconic. Um, okay, I'm going to give you some harder ones. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? <laughs> That's not accurate to how Russell Crowe does it. Is it true that you can crush a man's skull with one hand? A man's? No. But a boys. <laughs> um, I would have voted for Obama a third time if I could have done. Very good. Get out. Yeah, yeah it's one good. of like the uh, the great white people be like quotes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, who's, what's, who's that actor again? He's in The West Wing. Bradley Whitford. Bradley Whitford. Very good. Sorry, I'm just this sink bit. into the floor. Yeah, you are now in the trunk. Okay. I was perfect. Final line of the film. I was perfect. Oh, the black, uh, black swan. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, that, the, black the black swan. swan yeah, black yeah, great swan. film. I haven't seen that in a long That's time. A really good film. I remember I was at school and my English teacher over the weekend had gone to see Black Swan and we were meant to be like it was a double English lesson. We were like meant to be going through. I think we were studying like Forster or something, and he just came in and was like, oh. I saw Black Swan over the weekend, spoke for an hour about how good Black Swan was, wow. didn't do the lesson. Brilliant. I thought it was brilliant because yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not doing English, I just get to listen. But he really sold me on the film. <laughs> you know what, that's needed because I bet as a 17-year-old you went, there was probably that scene between I was younger. Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis. You were probably oh, like, God, yeah. that is all I needed. <laughs> how, was that, how, when did that film come out? That came out in 2011. Yeah, January 2011. Yeah, so, yeah, and he just, he just didn't do the lesson, just spoke about how great Black Swan was. And I was like, great right. film, really, really loved it. Okay. Nina Sayers. What did you do? Did you play the white swan? The white swan. Your white swan is perfect, but you your black swan is no good. Do you know who I forget is in that film? Winona Ryder. She is in that film. You're right, she's, yeah. She's like a, she's like a yeah, the, glass the drunk. Of wine yeah. Out of touch. Yeah. <laughs> Old. Um, I mean, there's, Very lo disturbing there's loads film. of quotes in this film, and this is quite an obscure one, but um, I'm glad he's single because I'm going to climb him like a tree. Oh, uh, uh, Bridesmaids. Yes. Yes, of uh, Melissa McCarthy. Also, one of my favorites is Steam from My Undercarriage. <laughs> Do you remember that when she's on the plane? She puts her leg up there. So you feel that? Steam. Feel that? Steam. <laughs> she's so good in that. All right, one. I'm going to give you one last one, okay? And you should get this. Are you watching closely? Oh, um, oh my God. Are you watching? Uh, the Prestige. Yes. 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 Is that the first line of the film? That is the first yes. line of the film. And it's the, it's the line that uh, Christian Bale's character says Straight all away, the time. Nolan is like, you better watch yeah. closely. As it comes in over the, the hats. hats. Okay, the free hacks to every magic yeah. trick. No, no, every, no, no, no. Every magic every act magic act. consists of three parts. It's the pledge. <laughs> or you take, you know, you, you show the yeah. audience you've got something normal. And then it's like, then you've got the turn. You take something that's ordinary. And you present it as extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just, 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 just... Oh, I love it, it. If I could see you kissing her leg on the side, <laughs> so can the guys at the ends of rows three, three and four. four. <laughs> oh. the, the Langford double the is the superior yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, the Langford double. How did you not know? <laughs> did you not know? James is going to do the whole film now. I can now. do the whole thing. <laughs> Remember when that opens, though, and you've got that shot of the... 
when that film opens, you got that shot of the black cat going over the hats. Yeah. And as you have that voiceover from Michael Caine, then you see the birds in the cage, oh, and then you see the, so and then you see Hugh Jackman on stage, and the curtain lifts. And it's like whoa. The Prestige is so good at giving you enough to yes. where you should have figured it out and you yeah. don't feel cheated by yeah. the reveal. Yeah. And that that's what I think a lot of films don't get right is when, when there is a huge twist or huge riddle to solve. They don't go like, here are all the here are all the nuggets that you were yeah. there for you the whole time. Not to like go back to the Batman, but like when I talk about a three-hour Batman film where the villain is the Riddler, yes. I expected there to be like, oh, like these clues. Yes. You, you, you made the Riddler your villain. Yeah. More deceit. Make me go like, aha, what yeah. was the big riddle? Like there were some riddles in the film with the Riddler that I was like, okay. <laughs> and like some of them Batman just figures out. And then some, of, and then like there's one thing they really toil over, and I'm like, this is quite embarrassing that this is what's the big I, riddle of this. Just think, I just realized this. I know this is Batman chat, but yeah. is the Riddler is that whole premise is that as interesting as Die Hard Three? No, no, just Simon no, says that's such a good reference. Yeah. Die Hard Three is much more of a mystery with actual Simon riddles. Says. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that Simon says? Yeah, it's, it's, it's Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. But, but yeah, what yeah is, like that, that so, so, really interesting comparison where that film does more to string you along yeah. the riddle than, than the Riddler does in the Batman. Mm. And, and there's like a sense of like, because in the trailer, the trailer, it's like no more in lies. The in the trailer? <laughs> so, I was like, in the trailer? In the trailer. And there's this thing about no more lies, like expose the truth is some of the marketing I've seen. And like, it's not a spoiler for me to say that like the big truth just wasn't that interesting. Nah. The big like shock horror reveal. And I don't want to sound like I'm a nerd. I know Batman stuff. Because I've played, read, watched a fair amount of Batman content, that reveal, yeah. To me, wasn't like oh, uh, I've like yeah, I've seen that strand in other Batman material. It almost was sort of slightly right. disrespecting its Batman audience who love Batman and who read other Batman things. I'm like, that's not that's not a huge shock for me that that was that was revealed. We've got our Batman review. It's a separate We've reviewed channel. Our Batman. Go and check it so out. All about my impressions. To wrap up this thing about yes. film quotes, though, what is for you off oh, the top God, of your head right now? What are your favorite film quotes? My favorite film quotes. We've already done The Grinch. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, The Grinch could be a the whole Grinch, episode. The Grinch is filled. Um, Step Brothers is one of my all, like one of my most yeah. quotable films. Like, don't touch my drum set. My <laughs> favorite one is, that was me at about a six. You don't want to see me go to 10. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, and I was like, I just heard my son holding a bicycle scream rape at the top of his lungs. It's like, Mom, I swear to God, he looked at me in, me, uh, in my eye and he said, Let's get it on. I'm like, I did not say that. I know I am not a raper. <laughs> a raper. <laughs> it's uh, like, uh, you know, I've never really connected with Step Brothers. It's because you're. It's, uh, I'm an idiot. No, <laughs> no. It's 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 there to be connected. Did you, when did you watch it? When I was the right age. But, oh, okay. But on my own. But I, you know, I loved Anchorman. But you know, you and I are the same age. So yeah, I I just oh, I the one, just the one, that was perfect time for me at that age to fall in love with it. The that one, and like White Chicks, which hasn't aged well at all. Not I've seen either. Oh, you you can't enjoy that now. Right, I bet. Cut to me at ten years old. Hysterics. No. The um, in Step Brothers again. Your ages are quite. You, you would have been fourteen, I think. Fourteen, James, yeah. For, but the, the for White Chicks. No, for no, Step Brothers. Yeah. For Step Brothers, the line that does make me laugh always is when he's. But he's buried him in the yard. He's still awake. <laughs> and he's like, well, what are you doing? He goes, you're waking the neighbors. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> when, when at the end, when they have the Chewbacca masks. And he's like, he's like Ch Star Wars masks. And one of them's really good. And the other one isn't. He's like, it's okay that mine's not cinema quality. <laughs> yeah. He's all the time. And the, guy, the older brother, Derek, played by Adam Scott. Yes. Is so good. He's like, babe, Dane Cook, HBO, 10 minutes, let's go. <laughs> so good. Oh, and then George, uh, what are some of your favorite quotes? I don't, I, off the top of my head, that's really hard. We've talked before about Toy Story 2, yeah. the one I always say about like, but I don't want to use my head. Yeah, that's your favorite. Um, I love, it, the Grinch take the whole thing. Um, I mean, take a film like The Social Network, there's so oh, many so quotes about the whole thing. I, what I think about is, uh, if you want to stand on my shoulders and call yourself tall, go ahead. Oh, so yeah. Mark Zuckerberg just destroys people in that meeting. And also sometimes when I'm being bothered by people and I just want to sit on my phone and look at stuff, I'll be like, you have part of my attention. You, you have, have the minimum, minimum amount. He does, uh, Jesse Eisenberg captures that uh, character that we all know of like the quiet nerdy kid who sits there quietly until he can verbally destroy you. Yeah. And they live for that moment to just talk really quick, quickly and just annihilate you with yeah. words. They're, they're building up the frustration. They're building up the frustration. And like the and score just, just comes in with that menacing. like, boom, yeah. And also that's got such great, you know, 
sound, um, score by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, but I love that it ends on a Beatles song, which is so... The ending of that social network is so, so We could dedicate a whole and, episode and to it. As it, it the, the film which is also uh, written by Aaron Sorkin, which does a similar thing, is the Steve Jobs film with Michael Fassbender, yes. which I think is so underrated. Yeah. And they do this wonderful way, which is so Sorkin, of storytelling by weaving different arguments over each other and yeah. cutting between those two moments in time. Yes. And in Steve Jobs, there's like a fantastic row between Michael Fassbender and Jeff Daniels, and it's intercut with all these different scenes. And The Social Network does the yeah. same with the trial and then other arguments. And it's like, it's words going at 100 words yeah. a, se a second, but it, it, it's such an effective way to, to create a, a, a structure of what happened yeah. to these characters, and it's just brilliant. There's a great track used in that as well over the course, of, over that argument. By, on the, yeah, on the, no, on, on um, Steve, in Steve Jobs. Jobs by the... the, the, the Composer, uh, I think it's called Daniel Pemberton. It's called Change the World, and it really just right. builds up to this huge. Like, yes, yeah, 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 I know that one. Yeah, that was some of our favorite film quotes. We should do more. We should do a we whole. Should do we should present another round. Favorite film quotes. Yeah, we should do that. Anyway, Godfather's Fifty. New film quotes. Do it, Batman. Ah! <laughs>